Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about 10 items that you can use for an emergency while you're at home. Each home is different and each situation will be different, so these item recommendations may not fit your needs. You must do your research and plan accordingly. For reference, I am in the Northeast and I have four different seasons at where I live. And I have a relatively medium to large size house and we do live in a rural area. So these items might be customized towards that section of where I live. Let's get started. We have a Leatherman Super Tool 300 here. This is a plier based type of tool. It's a great tool for working. Uh, you don't have to get this exact model, but it does have a variety of tools, which I value and uh, has a serrated blade edge for cutting and has a saw as a variety of different screwdrivers and bottle openers, wire cutters, etc, etc. We have the main knife here on the other side and we have files and more flathead screwdrivers and an awl. So it has a variety of different tools. In the center here we have a wire cutter and we have a wire crimper in the center over there as well behind the head here. And on the outside we have measuring increments for centimeters and inches. A very useful rugged tool to have. You don't have to get the same exact model with all the features, but the idea of having a multi-tool on hand just to fix something in a flash is a good thing to have. It's not necessarily the best thing to use all the time, but it's good to have in that situation, especially in an emergency. On the right here, we also have the Swiss Army Victorinox Mini Champ, and this has some smaller items similar to the Leatherman. It has a screwdriver here, a 3D one, and we have the regular blade here. We also have scissors, which does come in handy quite a lot in everyday carrying activities. We do have a pen in this model since it's the Midnight Mini and a mini light that's built into the, to the uh, unit, which is good to have in case you can't find your main light. You can use this for seeing and we'll jump into that later. We have some other tools here for prying and we have smaller screwdrivers and rulers. And again, we have a cutter for box opening or peeling. We have a sheets blade knife and we also have our nail file here. So a very useful tool, just a different idea for you to carry at home. This might be more of an EDC type of item, but it does come in handy in emergencies as well. Moving up to the next item, we have flashlights. So I have two examples here. We have the Skill Hunt M150 version 3. This is a high CRI type of light, but it is a flashlight with a different mode operations. We have low outputs, we have medium outputs on this light, so it does offer a variety of different run times for the lumen output, which is important when you're in an extended duration of darkness during the emergency. And it also has higher modes, which is good for when you need to see something real quick. It has a turbo mode here, and I personally like my higher CRI rendering. It has a Nietzsche 519 type of emitter inside there, and it's a neutral white type of emitter, which is my favorite. This also runs on 14500s and AA batteries, so it's really good to have in emergency because you can just pop in a AA after the lithium-ion battery dies or if you can't charge it. This has its own separate charging system, which runs off a of USB portable power banks, which we'll go over in another moment here. But we also have the Perun Mini from Olight. This is a small L-sized light or a L-shaped light, which is good because you can mount it into aftermarket accessories like this headband, for example. So now you have hands-free operation. Having hands-free operation is very invaluable in an emergency because sometimes you can't hold a light with one hand and work with the other hand. This definitely helps you out immensely, and I do recommend having a headlamp of some sort. Not these exact models, but you get the idea. Moving along, we have battery banks, which we did mention before, and batteries, and the appropriate cables that go with it. We have a USB battery bank, which I do recommend for emergencies. Always good to charge your phone, lights, and other electronic devices with these small battery banks. And then we also have a pair of AA batteries, which works well with some of my systems that I use, and the charging cable, obviously, for the phone and other devices. Next up is a representation of the category, which is tape. We have some electrical tape here. I do recommend carrying a variety of different tapes, electrical, duct tape, gorilla type tape, and clear tape for a variety of different situations. But this is something you'll probably likely have around the house. And if you don't, you probably want to grab something similar to this where you can have a roll or several rolls of tape ready to go to repair certain items or fix certain things in an emergency. Moving along, we have 
another obvious one, which is radios, and my favorite part, because I'm a ham radio operator. We have a Sony ICF SW7600GR radio. This is a shortwave type of radio. The specialty in this type of radio is that it also does single sideband, which is important to me and what I use it for when monitoring ham bands. The idea behind this is to gather information and to act appropriately on that information. And these devices allow you to do that, albeit they're slightly different uh, functions and what they used for. But for this one, for example, you just turn it on and it has automatic reception of radio stations nearby. So you can get news, you can get warnings of weather, whatnot. So that's why I like having a shortwave type of radio receiver here. This covers a wide swath of the shortwave bands, which is really important to know what's going on in, ter in terms of an emergency, like say a blizzard or a civil unrest or just anything in general around your area you're going to get news on. And that's always good to plan ahead with that kind of information because the internet may not be useful. Your cell phone might not be working. You might not have power, etc., etc. These run on batteries, so definitely get a radio that runs on batteries. This particular model is a Yesu VX7R. It's a ham radio. You don't need a license to buy it. It runs on four different bands. Uh, we have 6 meter, 2 meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters that this can transceive on. It also has a wideband reception of the shortwave bands all the way up to 999 megahertz minus the cellular. So it's a very versatile wideband receiver radio as well as being a good transceiver radio. The value in this one is that you can not only listen to shortwave stuff like the Sony 7600 uh, GR, but you can also listen to VHF and UHF frequencies, which is very useful for local communication, such as fire, police, auxiliary military frequencies, aircraft bands, uh, local maintenance bands, town bands, whatever. This thing can do it all and receive analog information. It's not a digital radio, but it does receive a wide variety of analog signals, which will be active during an emergency situation. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can also talk, and if you do different modifications to radio. You can also transmit out of band and call for help on the police frequencies or fire frequencies, which I don't recommend going to as your first option, but it is there with these types of radios. This particular model is waterproof and submersible, so that's also nice to have in case you know you're in a flood zone, your house gets flooded. This radio will be able to work, and you'll be able to call for help if it does get wet. Uh, there's a variety of different battery packs for this one. It can run on double bays or lithium ions. So, but that's enough talking about the VX7R. The idea is to have some sort of comm unit with you other than your phone. So these will help immensely in terms of receiving information and transmitting information also. Next one is a pretty obvious one, but have a copious amount of water and or food or pretty much both items. Uh, those are pretty good to have because you're going to need water to sustain yourself and during an emergency, you might not be able to get out and get to water and food. For example, where I live, we sometimes get blizzards and the snow plows don't come in for a day or two, potentially. So you'll have to wait and wait out the storm and potentially go without food. Uh, it's a good idea to stock up on food and water. It's a straightforward, obvious thing, but not everybody does it. That's why I mentioned it here. So that's pretty much it for the food and water part. The next option is a combo piece here. What we have is the ability to start fire. So you have lighters, matches, ferro rods, and other methods of starting fire there. Uh, magnifying glass if you're really into that. Um, having the ability to have fire pro provides a way of making tools, processing food, creating light, creating warmth, especially in the colder months and a good psychological boost when things are cold out. So here in the Northeast, sometimes we get stuck in with blizzards. We don't have power, meaning our electrical controlled oil system does not burn necessarily properly. So that means our pipes freeze, etc., etc. Having the ability to heat your house and keep your pipes warm during the winter is paramount. So having the ability to start fire is something you want to have during an emergency while you're at home. Another thing you can probably see here based off the pack here, we have cordage here and different lengths of types of cordage. This is important because you can tie things down to secure things. You can make tools with it. You can repair things. And in some cases, you can even use the actual cordage itself for a wick or a fishing line or some kind of 
uh, gathering food device or lighting element as well. So that's very important to have in an emergency at your house. Another item that goes well with fire is a container that can be cooked or thrown on top of a fire. This is a stainless steel type of pot. I use this one for car camping, but it's a good idea to have something like that in your house that you can use over an open fire and that has the ability to not warp or be destroyed or emit chemicals into your food. This is 18-8 stainless steel food grade type of material. It's good for cooking things, keeping things secure. Uh, goes without saying, you probably want to have some utensils along with the pot as well. So this is a good item to have in an emergency at in your house. Finally, we have one of the really important things is first aid and medical stuff. So this includes like pills, medicines, uh, immediate ouchy boo boo kits. These are some civilian stuff that you can grab off the shelves. These are more geared towards lightweight hikers and cam camping, backpacking, etc., etc. I recommend you get a more fully loaded out kit other than these two things, but this serves as the example of medical kits. Uh, for example, this is just your basic medical kit for people, and you also want to kind of update your medical kits as you go along, maybe uh, customize them, load them out with different uh, items. For example, we have a more loaded out customized kit here. This is one of my... Uh, kits that I make for on the trails and in my car. This has a cat tourniquet, which I still have to take out of the uh, plastic here. We have an ETT bandage. We have some other splints and other materials, gauze and whatnot inside there. We also have uh, mylar space blankets over here, lighter, gloves, cutting tools, lighting elements, things like that in a customized medical kit will help you out in an emergency at your home. So those are the 10 different things I do recommend for an emergency at home. Of course, each thing is going to change and be different based on your situation and how many people you're living with or if you're by yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as a last bonus, I do have an EDC bag, which I combined almost all the elements here that we see on the table. This has cutting tools on the outside. This has a light on the outside, a writing device. In this slip here, slip pouch here, we have an ouchie booboo kit along with toilet paper. On this side here, we have a full tang knife. And on the handle here, we have some cordage to use as well. And we'll briefly look inside of here. On the inside, we also have flashlights, a headlamp, some whistle signaling devices, matches. We also have a lighter, a cutting tool here. And we also have water filtration. We have a ham radio in the silver bag along with a solar charger and a backup light. And we have a variety of different items inside here, a compass, a whistle, etc., etc. So we have some items that we normally would find around the house inside of a small kit. And I do recommend grabbing some sort of organizational pouch. It doesn't have to be this, this exact one. For reference, this is a VanQuest FTIM 5x7 Generation 2 pack. And it packs everything that I use nice and neatly inside. So I have everything in one spot I can just grab real quick and I can utilize an emergency around the house or when I'm out and about. And uh, that's kind of my philosophy with being, uh, being, I guess you could say, prepared for some instances of things. So overall, I do recommend some of those items on the list for most people. Again, it changes based on your needs and your environments. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy.